What's up guys? I'm here to teach you some of the basics of lock picking. Now, first of all, this is not licensed to do anything illegal, so don't be an idiot. Don't try and break into your neighbor's cat's doghouse or whatever, because that makes perfect sense. Second of all, there are two main rules to lock picking. One, only pick your own locks, and two, never pick a lock you need, because even though it's unlikely there is a chance that the lock pick or the tension wrench can break off inside the lock, and you'll have to call a real locksmith, and that's not cheap or fun. So let's get started with an explanation of the tools I have right here. I have several different ones. First off are the actual lock picks. I have three different types here. The top one is called a single diamond. This is used for just pushing up the pins individually. It has a nice little top right there. You can use it to really control what you're doing. The second one is called a hook. It's great for getting towards the back of locks if you can't actually do it well with this. It allows you to curve in under the other pins. And it's a lot better because it won't require pushing up all the other pins if you're trying to get to just one. And finally we have the rake, which is just wavy, it's nice and flexible. A little, These are nice and rigid because I have stainless steel tools. But this one you can actually just basically jam in and out of a lock and we'll bump the pins around and hopefully unlock it relatively quickly. It's not the most efficient sometimes and it does have problems with more advanced locks, but that's to be expected. And finally, we have this thing called the snap gun. Click it, see how it pulls down, snaps back up. Same basic principle as the rake, it just does it mechanically. And there's a few different tips for it, this one and the curved one, so if you're trying to get up under a lock, you can use that, but it's a pain he has to change them because I don't have a screwdriver right now. And finally, let's take a look at how a lock actually works. This is a practice lock. I'm going to take a nice, take my half diamond, or my single diamond, actually put it in the front of the lock. Oh, crap. I have to do this left handed. So, as you can see, you can see the pins right in there. If I take this, put it all the way in, and push up, you can see how they're all different sizes. There we go and that way you can actually tell how the locks work. The reason why lock picking works is it's impossible to make a perfectly straight line. And these pins are just holding it in place, so until the brakes and all the pins line up with the top of the lock, it will not turn. So as you can see, I can wiggle that a little bit, but you can't actually turn it and unlock it. So let's try this basically. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Oh, one more tool that's actually very, very important. These are tension wrenches. They're used to actually turn the lock while you're picking it. And these are actually more important than a bunch of lock picks. I have nine of these, three of them are double-sided, and I still don't have enough for some of the locks that I've tried. So anyway, what this does, you actually have to choose one for the lock you're picking. As you can see, this one has a fairly large opening, so just going out on a hunch, say I didn't know what this lock was, I'd probably choose the thickest one I have, which is still pretty thin. But for this one, it's actually still too thick. You can get it in there, but it's stuck like that. It's not the most comfortable way to pick a lock. You do want it to be a little bit uh, have a little bit of wiggle room sometimes. It might be easier for some, harder for some. But I actually got one that's a little bit thinner. Slide that right in. And it will catch perfectly. You can still hold it in the same way, but it won't jam in there quite the same. It's kind of personal preference sometimes. It really depends on you. So anyway, let's take a look at how I actually pick this. So proper technique for right-handed people Hold the lock in your left handed, in your left hand. Put either your pinky, your fourth finger, or your third finger on the tension wrench, and push down lightly. You want to see a little bit of an indent in your finger, not enough so that you actually start to cut off blood flow. And you'll probably want it out towards the edge because that's the most leverage you'll have. 
So let's give this a shot. I'm going to have to pick this left-handed. So I'm holding the lock in my right hand. Same principle, but... Uh, actually, this is probably better. So I actually turn the pick around. This isn't possible for every lock. Some locks only turn a single direction, and that's kind of a pain in the ass, but I'll show you how to tell that in a bit. I'm going to take my single diamond pick, and let's see if you can actually watch what happens. So you go in. It's, the best way to start is by what's called raking the pins. You stick it as far back as you can, pull up, and drag it back. And each little click, you'll be able to tell is one pin. So you might want to do that a few times to make sure you get the... I just unlocked it. Okay. <laughs> older locks are easier to pick. And I'm talking about older as in use, not older as in actual how actually how new they are. Let's try that again and see if I can't pick it instantly. So push up. Drag back. Two... One, two, three, four, five. So there's five pins, you can see that right there. There's a slot for a sixth one that I'm not using. So how to actually pick it, you actually have to go through, put tension on the wrench, not too much, just enough to make sure it's turned, like how you would a key. And you'll push up on each one. As you go through, one pin will likely have more resistance than the others. That's because it's actually pressing up against the side of the holes for the pins. That's what you want to look for, because when you go through that, you'll be able to push them up, and it will catch on the edge of the lock. So you just push up on these. I'm doing this in a mirror, basically, so bear with me. Okay, that one's caught. Looks like the middle one might still be... Stuck. This lock took me forever to pick the first time because the pins do not quite line up properly. But as you can see, easy as that. You will turn it, and it goes right back to being locked. Nobody would know you were there. Now, demonstrate the rake. It's again, not my favorite technique, but it's useful nonetheless. So, just do that. Slide it in there. There we go. Pretty quickly, but it's more chance to damage the lock, more chance to damage your picks, and it's not as fun, because I like a challenge. So, same principle, just slide it in there. Easy as that. And finally, we have the snap gun, which sometimes is a little too much for the locks, and we'll just push them up too high and you won't be able to properly get it. Let's see if I can hold this so you guys can see. So slide that in to the back. Let's see. This is horrible technique, but it works. And every so often you'll want to actually twist it back the other way so all the pins will fall back down if you're not getting it. Because sometimes they'll actually get stuck up above the line, so it's impossible unless they slide back down. So let's give that another shot. It's actually surprising how little tension you will need for most locks, because you got all the torque out towards the edge, and if you're putting too much on, you'll easily get them stuck up inside of the pin assembly. There we go. So same principle as the rake. Just a little bit different way of doing it, more mechanical. And these are not hard to get. It's only illegal in Virginia, I believe, to own a lockpick set. It's still, you gotta be careful. Some require proof of purchase, some require forms, some requ some states require, um, if you, they can prove intent 
or think they can prove intent, you're going to be in trouble. So it's generally not a good idea to carry a lockpick set with you if you're... There's little ones you can get that are just like wallet-sized, single-use. So if you're locked out of your house and don't want to spend 120 bucks on a locksmith, you can use those pretty easily. Uh, this lock I was going to show you, I don't have a good tension wrench for it because it's got a really weird keyhole. As you can see, it's very short. I have this one, but it doesn't quite fit properly. So I slide that in. And this is one of the locks that only turns one direction. You can tell that by, if you stick a tension wrench in, turn it one way, and it should not move one way, and the other way will wiggle pretty easily. As you can see, I let off. It returns to its original position, but if I push on it, it will actually turn a little bit. Let's see. Okay, that's enough. I'm going to give this a shot real quick, just to explain the mechanics. So, since you can't see the pins on this one, I can actually pick it how I like. So this one, there's not much room, so you kind of have to push down on the tension wrench, then push up again. I'm going to break the pins real quick. I think there's five in this one, maybe four, two, three, I think four. So you do that, so now it's time to actually start picking. So, light tension, push up, and it feels like one pin will get a little stuck. Push up on that one, keep the tension on, find another pin that's stuck, and repeat the process. You'll have to kind of push up on each pin every time, and see which one's got the most resistance. You might have to restart a few times, so, like I said, ah, crap. Tension wrench, it'll let off, turn it slightly in the other direction, all pins will fall back down, and you can continue trying. Because I've seen people just keep going for minutes on end, and it's not working for them, they're wondering why. It's because the pins are actually stuck up above the line, and that's no fun for anybody. Except for me, the person who has stuff on the other side of the lock. So, keep on trying this one. Not this one. Damn it. Like I said, tension wrenches are extremely important. They should fit snugly, not turn like this, or be loose enough to completely go down like that, because they'll get in your way. So, let's go ahead and try this one. By the way, this lock's from a dollar store. This lock I got at Walmart for like four bucks. And yes, I had to go to Walmart for this because I was broke and wanted a lock to practice on. That wasn't easy. So this one, I think, is, let's see, push up, pull back, one, two, three, four pins. This is basically any padlock. Some are three, some are four. If you're splurging 20 bucks on a padlock, might have five, might not. And I'll explain about some safety features some locks have to prevent picking. So, anyway, I think for this one, we'll use the hook. This one you can actually go down, cup each one, but it will push up on some pins sometimes if you're using it like this. So, you gotta figure out which pick is best for the situation. So let's see, push back, go back on each pin. Okay, there's one. There's another one. And if you have no patience, lock picking probably isn't for you. It requires some trial and error. As you get better, you'll be able to figure out what's going on, how the pins work, how different locks are to pick. I think this one turns either way. I prefer the right on this one, just because I can actually pick it how I like, as I said. And I talk when I'm trying to do something and I get distracted, so I'm going to quiet down and just work on this for a second.
Believe it or not, this sometimes actually works as just a normal lockpick. Because if you need to get several pins at once, this can actually help with that. Or if you get frustrated, you can do this. Might do another video just for this one, see if you guys want that. But that's the basics of lock picking. You can see how it all works. You got the basic idea. Um, I'll point you where to buy these. So if you want to buy just a pick set, I got mine for $15 of DEF CON. It came with these three picks and these three tension wrenches. Uh, $15, I can, I'll put a website around here, Magic Hands. Um, I'll find a pick set that's comparable to that. All these tension wrenches came with the snap gun from Sparrow's Lockpicks. I'll put a link to that over here as well. And the practice lock, I think, was 25. You can get that wherever this is. Um, and I'll do one more set of all different ones with annotations, all that fun stuff. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, you guys. I'll do another one if you guys want. Let me know. Stay tuned. Take care.